All right, well, good morning, folks, or good afternoon, sorry. Um, it's always good to bring the word to um, the saints, and so I'm honored. All right, so I gave a title to this talk. Um, it's called Warreth, um, which basically means to wage war. <laughs> and it comes from a scripture that we might be familiar with. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 4 and we'll go there just to start off it says no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier i gave a talk a few weeks ago talking about spiritual warfare and um and how we were in the battle and um and we sort of looked at who is our enemy um and uh what are some of his devices that he uses uh, against us um and where the battleground is <clears throat> and i did read this scripture but i when i looked at it i thought that um there's a bit more in there that we could sort of use personally uh especially at a, at a time of prayer and fast because it's it, it's like we have a choice there, right? It says, no man that warreth entangle himself with affairs, uh, with the, himself with the affairs of this life. And it, it's, a, it's a good reminder that uh, no doubt we're going to have some affairs in life that we got to deal with, right? Whether it's health issues, uh, economics, a job or relationships, or just our... It, our emotional state right those could all could be bundled up as the affairs of this life but even though we have those issues I, the lord doesn't want us to stay there right he wants us to uh wage war right and and um <clears throat> and rise up right above those things not to ignore those things but um, we have a, a greater commission, and uh, no doubt these prayer and fast are, are real important because it it helps us disconnect, right? It helps us disentangle ourselves with the the affairs of this life that we often get involved with, right? And um, prayer and fasting is a it's a really good time to sort of self examine ourselves to reflect on ourselves and and ask those bigger questions maybe or ask those uh difficult questions uh to ourselves and um you know like you know what am i doing you know who who am i really you know do i believe that i am the son and daughter of the living god and am i going to play the victim or am i going to get the victory right and um it this time of prayer and fasting, it's a really good time to sort of disconnect, disentangle ourselves uh, with the world and, and with things, right? We're, we're putting away, um, you know, food, right? And just really focusing on the things of the Lord. And it it's a real eye-opener sometimes, right? When we do that, we uh, we begin to see clearly what, what the Lord wants us to focus on. And so... Um, you know, reading the scripture, no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. And um, and so <clears throat> when we look at the language here, you know, the Lord's called us soldiers, right? We, we got to put on sort of like the mindset of a soldier. And um, that we, we are waging war, you know, we are, um, you know, pr preaching the gospel. and. And that's in a sense of waging war, right? Where we're we're putting forth the word of God, and uh, we're we're doing battle against the the principal principalities of this world. And so, um, we're, we're, so we got to put this mindset that we are a soldier, that we are doing battle, that you know we do have to have some preparation, right? And uh, no doubt, prayer and fasting is a, a really good time to really focus on that, right? To, to get away um, from the day-to-day -day issues, the affairs of this life, 
and just really focus on the things of the Lord. And no doubt, this is something that we got to do pretty much on a daily basis, not not just on a prayer and fast, you know, right? Right when we wake up in the morning, you know, we, we need to do this. And it, it's something that we, we can't be lackadaisical about, something that we just uh, can put off. Um, and I, I brought up in the, in this waging warfare or doing spiritual battle that we have an enemy. It's like a, a roaring lion and uh, he's out to get us, you know, and uh, we cannot let or put our, our battle gear down. Right. And so, um, so this prayer and fast is, is a good time to disentangle ourselves with that and to also um, sort of recalibrate right we gotta re sometimes recalibrate our life with the lord and um i often um we have these specialized measuring tools that work these i they uh, distributed these um, uh calipers they're called and it's a real precision measuring tool but every four months i have to bring them back to the calibration department because they have to be recalibrated mm -hmm. And so there's a certain standard that they have, the special tools uh, that, uh, that they put these measuring devices through and um, they have to make sure that they're calibrated. And so when we take measurements in the field or if uh, I'm doing some testing or something that we're gonna have accurate measurements um, because these tools are calibrated. And so the same thing with us, right? You know. Well, during this time of prayer and fast, it's a really good time to recalibrate ourselves that we're that we're to the standard of the Lord, right? And we we measure ourselves to the Word of God. And sometimes we're out of calibration, right? But praise the Lord, you know, we could come to the Lord and, and get recalibrated, right? Okay, we're we're good, you know, and um, then we we go out and 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 into this life, right? Because there's no doubt we we have we have affairs we got to go to work we got to do this but um, but we're calibrated right we're we're to the standard that the Lord wants us to be and and so um, it's important that we do that on a on a regular basis you know not just every four to six months like my Mishatoyo calipers are done but um, it's it's something that we got to do on a daily basis. And um, in, in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight, you don't have to go there, but it says, let a man examine himself, examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. And this is what we do in communion, right? Communion is um, a, a very important time. Uh, I know for, for me, I, I do really examine myself. It's not just drinking the bread and, and drinking the, the, or eating the bread and drinking the cup. But it's, you know, we, we don't want that ever to be just a routine, right? We're, we're taking communion. We're sort of examining ourselves. And again, if there's some things that we need to take before the Lord, that, that's a good time to take them, you know, and, and we can ask for forgiveness, right? We, we could get uh, cleansed, right? Disentangled with the things of, of this world and, um, and be renewed, be, be rejuvenated in the things of the Lord. And in Hebrews, you don't have to go there, 11.25, uh, they're talking about Moses here. And it says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Right? So there's a, a, a decision that we have to make, right? And it, and it all starts up here. And I, I did bring that out, that the battlefield that we're in, you know, we're soldiers. and But most of the battle is taking place in our mind. You know, we can't. We can't underestimate the, the role that the mind plays in our walk in the Lord because the, up here is where decisions are made. This is where we're being influenced, you know, what we're taking in. And so we got to be very extra cautious on, you know, what we're watching, what are we are exposing ourselves to, because ultimately it, it's placing a seed in there. And so um, it, it's important that, um, that, you know, we're, we're looking to the Lord and not looking to the world um, to get knowledge and wisdom and how to live our life. 
All right. <clears throat> so ultimately, um, there's a, a song that uh, I'm reminded of. It's uh, called Let's Forget About Ourselves, all right, and magnify the Lord and praise his name. And um, that, that's no doubt that what we're, that's what we're doing in, in prayer and fasting, right? We, we are forgetting about ourselves, right? And, and just really focusing on the things of the Lord. And, um, and it, that's, that's the main goal. And th that's what we want to continually do you know, on, on a daily basis. And, and not just on prayer and fasting, not just in meetings, but, you know, Lord, what do you want me to do, right? Lord, send me, right? Um, and then, <clears throat> you know, we know that we're going to have afflictions, right? In just verse three of uh, Second Timothy chapter two, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know, there's going to be times when we're going to have to endure hardness. It's going to, there's going to be times when the affairs of this life are, are, you know, are grabbing hold of us. But the Lord saying, you know, put that away. I know you have that. I don't want you to stay there. I want you to be effective for me, right? And, um, and it's going to be hard. There's no doubt about it. It's going to be hard. But we see as, as we do this and we put those affairs of life and we look to the Lord, you know, and being about his business, you know, praying for our brother or sister, evangelizing, that joy is going to sustain us that he gives us, you know, for doing the Lord's work, you know, he's going to raise us up and, you know, he does that. He's not going to, um, you know, let us suffer affliction or endure hardness and do something for him. And then there's more hardness, right? No, the, he's going to give us joy. He's going to give us substance. Then there's a prize in a sense um, that we're going to get, you know, and we know we know the joy of the Lord when we preach the gospel and somebody listens and somebody gets spirit filled and, and um, you know, somebody makes a stand for the Lord. We, we see the joy there, right? We see um, that it's, um, it's joy unspeakable, right? The peace that passes understanding. That's what's going to get us through and sustain us. Okay, let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, we're starting in verse uh, 7. And here Paul sort of wraps it up. It says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. And praise the Lord. That's, that's what it comes down to. You know, we, we definitely need to remind each other that the Lord is coming back. You know, that's our ultimate goal, right? And um, we cannot let any strongholds take hold of us, right, in our mind or in our heart. We have anything like that this is an excellent time during prayer and fast just to release those disentangle ourselves with those things put them before the lord get recalibrated right get to the lord's standard and uh we can go out and be effective instruments for him and uh all right uh turn with me to amos chapter four in the old testament Amos chapter 4 and verse 4. Come, O Bethel, and transgress at Gilgal, multiply transgression, and bring your sacrifice every morning and your tithes after three years. And offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving with leaven, and proclaim and publish the free offerings. For this liketh you, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord God. And I also have given you cleanness of teeth in all your cities, and want of bread in all your places. Yet have you not returned unto me, saith the Lord. And I've withholden the rain from you when there was yet three months to the harvest. And it causes, caused it to rain upon one city and caused it not to rain upon another city. One piece was rained upon and the other piece whereupon it, rain, it rained not withered. <clears throat> so 
today we have a nice sunny day in Fresno, which is uncharacteristic for recent weather in, in uh, California. But looking particularly at verse six and cleanness of teeth, um, I went to the dentist this week and I got a clean bill, bill of health. Um, I had clean teeth, <laughs> no cavities. But that's a good thing. But in the context here, cleanness of teeth is not a good thing. It means famine. So sometimes what we read in the word of the Lord is a little bit different to what we see in society and what we understand today. So I thought I'd take a, a little bit of a look at that. So let's turn to uh, Luke 8. Luke 8 and chapter, verse 4. This is the parable of the sower and the seed. And when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to his seed and he sowed. Some fell by the wayside and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it. Devoured it. And some fell upon the rock and as soon as it was, it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. And other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit uh, an hundredfold. And when he had uh, said these things, he cried, he that hath ears, uh, let him hear. Now, this, when Jesus lived, it was an agrarian society. Um, and I've, I've worked in the agribusiness industry now for uh, 24 years. Uh, can probably add a couple years to that if you count the years that my dad tried to make me a farmer and put me on a tractor. Um, so I know a few things about agriculture. I, I, I grow some of my own vegetables. I was out harvesting today. So I've got uh, some green beans that, that I grew. Um, I, I've got uh, a beet. Um, and carrots are even better. They go, grow pretty well. And the thing I'm least proud about is my broccoli. See, it's a beautiful big broccoli plant. And somewhere in here, let's see if you can get it up to the camera um there's a little broccoli head um <clears throat> so been trying to grow broccoli for three years trying to different things <clears throat> entirely unsuccessful unsuccessful about it so i know a thing or two about farming but thing or two about agriculture um but i'm not an expert um, but in the, in the ag industry, we have, uh, there's a saying that most people get their food from the grocery store. Um, and if you're talking to somebody in the ag industry and they tell, tell you that you're one of those people, um, you've just been insulted, um, because the insin insinuation there is that you get your food from the grocery store. You have no idea where food comes from, really. And unfortunately that's kind of true of a lot of people in our society and because of that it kind of uh we, we kind of lose the meaning of uh we, we there's a danger of losing the meaning of some of these parables so i rewrote this parable um and put it into a different perspective that uh is more relevant for today so <clears throat> Uh, and when much people were gathered together, they will come to him out of every city. He spake by a par parable. An advertiser went forth to try to increase sales of their chocolate bar by advertising on TikTok. Some of the advertising fell on deaf ears as viewers clicked over the ad as quickly as they could. Other viewers saw the ad and thought it might be great to try the chocolate bar. And then another product came up and another and another. And pretty soon they were busy watching cat videos and forgot about the chocolate bar and were busy munching on potato chips. A few went out and bought the chocolate bar. And while it was good, there was another on the shelf beside it that they bought the next time. Finally, there were a few that bought the chocolate bar, loved it and extolled the flavor and health benefits to all of their friends to a hundredfold. So, 
a little bit different spin, <clears throat> but the story is the same. Uh, the disciples asked him, saying, what might this parable be? This is Luke 8, verse 9, King James Version again, not the Jeff Hershberger Version. <clears throat> and he said, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables that they might not see and hearing they might not understand. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The seed, the TikTok advertisement. <clears throat> Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Those are those that clicked over the ad, just went on as soon as they could. There's a lot of people that do that. They hear the word of God and they just go on, go on. They don't stop to really listen. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy. And these have no root, which while they believe, um, for a while believe, and in time they're te of temptation, they fall away. They get on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And pretty soon they're watching cat videos instead of listening to the Lord, listening to what the Lord has to say. And they which fell among the thorns, they which, when they have heard, go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Those are the ones that went out and bought the chocolate bar. They tasted it. They liked it. But then it was on the shelf next to another chocolate bar and they bought the other chocolate bar the next time. And they keep on trying different chocolate bars. People do that. Um, we, we have people come to our meetings, they get baptized, they receive the Holy Spirit, and then they go on to the next best thing or what they think is the next best thing. They don't really take the time to learn and they let the cares of this world come through. They go buy other chocolate bars and they get confused. Verse 15 of Luke 8. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having keep the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. In advertising, sometimes you get a loyal customer. Sometimes you get somebody that buys the chocolate bar, loves it, and they will share that, the message of the good chocolate bar with their friends. That's who we wanna be. We wanna understand that the chocolate bar that God gave us, the Holy Spirit, is something really good. It's something special. It's something that we can share with others. Um, we've, we've seen some baptisms here in, in Fresno over the last couple of weeks, and it's really exciting to be part of that. Uh, it's exciting to be in fellowship. Um, we can't get discouraged when people say, say they're going to come to a meeting, but don't. Um, part of my testimony is when I was first witness to, I was uh, on my way to Adelaide, and Folks said I should come to the Christmas camp in uh, Karakalinga. It was in Strathalbyn at the time. It was uh, about a 40-mile ride on a bicycle for me. And they offered to give me a ride. And I said, no, no, I'll, just, I'll, I'll go there. I'll be there. Um, I'll ride my bike 40 miles to, to get to the, the, the camp. And um, I, I, in my mind, I told them I would be there. And I was going. And I, I didn't understand the stunned the stunned look that everybody had on their face when I actually showed up I do now um if somebody was going to tell me that they're going to ride 40 miles on a bicycle to a meeting I wouldn't believe them either <clears throat> um but that happens people come let's not stop sharing the story uh, of what God has done for us let's not stop staring sharing the story chocolate bar um of the good fruit we may, ha we may not live in an agrarian society anymore, but the story is the same. Our story is no different than it was thousands of years ago. We need to spread the word. We need to share the word with people. We need to be in fellowship. We need to let that seed take root in us and grow. It can grow a carrot <clears throat> in the ground. The word of God grows within us as we fellowship, as we look to the Lord. 
So I just wanted to give encouragement today to keep on keeping on. Um, you folks are over in Georgia. We're over here in Fresno. Bobby's up in uh, uh, Seattle. And we have this wonderful fellowship together. We have this wonderful fellowship with the Lord. Keep on keeping on, all people said. I don't know. All right. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm at work. And uh, this morning, I got my notes, and got my Bible. So I have to use my phone to use my Bible. And then I had this guy from that works with us, works with me. He got this all this apparatus around here. So I feel like a big shot here, but I know what I'm doing. So my phone rings. I apologize. I'll just let it ring, I guess. Um, but thank you for inviting me. Um, and I'm sorry you get to see all those wheels and stuff in the back. Maybe you guys want to buy something, you can send me a text later and I can send them over to you. Just kidding. Um, I'll give you 10% extra though, Pastor Steve, if we make a sale. Um, today I want to talk about unity and just how we should be united with the uh, things of Christ, um, united in the spirit. Just when we're spirit filled, we become a. Um, a spirit failed family and I come from a family of seven my wife comes from a family of 16 and um but and I'm, I was married I don't know maybe nine years before I came to the Lord or I came spirit filled and um time I got spirit filled even to now um it's just a different ball game because you have the spirit of God inside of you and um it's such a different meaning having God, having the spirit of God, using the spirit each and every day, how close I feel to the Lord. I pray in the spirit every day. Um, we had a, a house meeting. We do different things. And Kathy said in her testimony today. And one of the things was that um, they asked the question, how do you feel closer to God? And for me, get closer to God, I really have to get on my knees and pray in the spirit. That's how I get closer to God. When I'm in a chair, just a chair like this, just sitting here, I am. I tend to my eyes would wander. Uh, I'd get my phone, and I'm still praying in the spirit, but I'm not really focused on what I'm praying for. So when I get on my knees, that's when I really get that unity of following things of the Lord and, and knowing what I need to do, following after things. Of the Lord. I really wanted to be at your guys' camp this year because of been Mary and I's um, 40th anniversary. Being married um, on the 23rd of April, so I've been right. I think on Sunday I've been really excited to be with my brothers and sisters in the Lord. But my helper has been having some health problems, and it's just, it wasn't the right time to go. But I'll be there in spirit. But if we can turn to First uh, Corinthians, I know you guys are saying hurry up, let's get going here, Pat. You guys are all hungry. I'm sorry, um, but I'll hurry. You know me. Um, 1 Corinthians of 1, 1, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians 1, 9. One verse 9. God is faithful by whom we were called into, unto his fellowship of sons of God, son of Jesus Christ our Lord. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and there be no divisions among you. But that which is perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. Many are called, but few are chosen. God has called each and every one of us out that are spirit filled and walk in his ways to follow after the Lord. But we have the Spirit of God, we have everlasting life if we can remember them. Just jump in and follow things of the Lord. Crave the fellowship. We want to be involved in the fellowship. And I remember verse 1, verse 10, it says, I beseech you. I'm pleading with you, Jesus, as Paul saying, I'm pleading with you. Please stay with the Lord. Put your hands on the plow and don't let go. Don't look back. Don't be like Lot's wife. And uh, Lot's wife and look back. Don't become that pillar of salt and stay focused. Put your hands on the plow and keep going forward. Speak the same thing. Preach the true gospel. The reason why my testimony is why I go from Kalinga to Fresno is because the truth is faithfully being preached. 
And the reason why I live in Fresno now and work in Kalinga is because when I'm in Fresno, I know my brothers and sisters all around me. I, I just have that peace of God with me. In Kalinga, I, I lived, I worked here 12 hours a day. I had 11 hours a day. Um, but I drive an hour and 15 minutes each way, an hour and a half in the morning, hour and a half at night. But when I get to Fresno, when my with my I know my brothers and sisters are in that town. I Dave Womack told me one day, he said, you know, I'm only 2.6 miles away from you. And uh, but that's a good feeling to know that you have a brother and sister that close. I have other saints real close. But that's where I want to be. I want to be around my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I want to be around my spiritual brothers and sisters. I got a lot of natural brothers and sisters in Lamore, which is another town kind of triangle here. But um, I very rarely go to Lamore. I have no desire to go to Lamore. I want to stay involved with my brothers and sisters in Lamore. Uh, can we go to John 2, please? But John 2, verse 1. And this talks about Jesus' first miracle. And there's this one little thing I'm going to read from um, 1 to 5, just so we can get where it's going here. But, and on the third day, there was a marriage in Cana in Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and the disciples to the marriage. And they went and they wanted wine. And the mother of Jesus said unto him, they have no wine. And Jesus said unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? It is not my hour yet come. And his mother said unto the servants, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Because Jesus' mother is saying, whatsoever he says unto you, do it. And God is saying today, if you're a new person, Follow after me. Repent, get baptized, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for everlasting life. Be built up in the whole, most holy faith, praying in that spirit each and every day, craving the spirit, craving the unity of the spirit of God each and every day. Uh, John 3, verse 1, we all know that. Well, maybe not all people, if you're new here today, and hopefully there may be, we don't know, we hope, we pray. But this really helped me with a man named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God, and no man can do these miracles except to be born, but God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto thee, except a man is born again, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? We kind of gave us kind of smart off your answer. And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, to thee, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. The born of the flesh is flesh, but what is born of the spirit is spirit. Um, you must be born again of the water of the Spirit. You must be baptized, fully submerged in the water. When I was a Catholic, I was sprinkled, which didn't mean anything. I was an altar boy, which meant nothing. Uh, when I left the Catholic Church, I was a president of a parish council, which meant nothing. Um, but being Spirit-filled, being born again, being born again of the water of the Spirit, not accepting Jesus as my personal Savior, but being uh, Spirit-filled, Walking in the ways of the Lord, being united with God, spirit filled, walking in the ways of the Lord, do add or subtract from the things of the Lord, follow up things up. We go to Psalms 34, please. Uh, Psalms 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man that trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you, you saints, for there is no one in them that fear him. Set your mind on Christ. Fear not man, but fear God. Fear God 
we will taste and see what the Lord has in store for each and every one of us. We all have trials and tribulations, but rejoice, taste and see what the goodness is our. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6, please. First Corinthians, I'm sorry, First Corinthians 13, 6. Rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Don't rejoice in the bad things in life that and my our friends are out fooling around, playing around on Saturday, and we're here at a prayer and fast. But rejoice in the truth. You are following things with truth. Everything that we do out of the Bible is right out of the Bible. We don't add to or subtract from the Bible. That was another one of my big testimonies that the reason I go to Fresno to Revival Fellowship is because everything's done right out of the Bible. Nothing's added to or subtracted from. Everything's in the Bible. We follow after the things of the Lord. But rejoice. Um, rejoice not in iniquity. Don't the, the sinfulness of this world, the, the bad behavior, um, foul mouth, whatever it is, don't follow after it. Rejoice with the Lord that you have the Spirit and you can have the, a great life without being involved with this junk in the world. Uh, Romans, Romans 8, please. Romans 8, verse 16. The Spirit itself bears witness with the, our spirit that we are children of God. We've been called out of this world. We've been filled with the Spirit. And if we're children, then heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If so, we suffer with him that we may be glorified together with him. Um, my parents, my mother, my dad died maybe, well, 10 years ago, but my mother just died. And being an heir with my mother is not going to, or my father, is not going to get me anywhere. But being heirs with Jesus Christ, I'm going to have everlasting life. Everlasting life. My eyes open again. I'm going to see the Lord. If I can stay focused on things of the Lord, stay close to him each and every day. Today's a day of salvation. Today I'm walking today. And I'm going to worry about tomorrow. I have to tell myself, don't worry about tomorrow. Got to stay focused today. For I reckon for the sufferings of the present time is not worthy to be compared to the glory to which he has revealed in us. I know many people are sick, going through different things, but God is there for each and every one of us. He's going to bless you. He's going to guide you. He's going to say, pick up your cross and follow after me. And we can be heirs with Christ. But Romans 8, 35. This is a scripture that um, I love a lot. Who will separate you? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Who's going to separate you from the truth today or tomorrow or whatever coming up next week? Well, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, pearl, sword. For as written, by thy sake, for my sake, they are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I'm persuaded neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, or things present, or things to come, nor height, nor depth, or any creature shall separate us from the love of God, which is our Jesus Christ, our Lord. We have to listen to that small, still voice in our mind. Don't let the things in of this world and get our neck to the knot about anything. Don't let anybody or anything separate you from the love of God. You've been called out. You've been called to be united with Christ, with your brothers and sisters in the Lord and your brothers and sisters throughout the world. Stay united. Don't let the, anything in this world separate you from the love of God. Because love, God loves each and every one of us. God loves us more than any of us could imagine. And he forgives us. We have to forgive one another. We have to enjoy one another's company because in heaven we're all going to be there together. Anyway, so you might as well start enjoying yourself now. 
And just the little things, what can I do better to help my brothers and sisters? What can I, can I put my brothers and sisters first instead of my wants and my needs? And start looking at people's, other people instead of we're looking at ourselves and look at their situation, pray for their situation, hoping that their situations will get better. Trying to build up a united, solid fellowship with one another, being built up in that most holy faith, knowing that we have everlasting life. We just got to hang in there and help one another, promote one another, encourage one another to do the things of the Lord. If we can close on uh, Colossians 3, verse two, uh, 2, please. Set your afflictions on things above, not on things on earth. So set your goals, your everything on things above. My walk is walking for the Lord. My goal is everlasting life. My life is not just what here on this earth, not in this tire shop or whatever. My goal is being with you, Lord. I want to be united with you. I want to serve you. I want to love you. But I want my brothers and sisters to encourage me when things are bad or get down. And I want my brothers and sisters to pray for me and I will be praying for you as well. And uh, because our goal is everlasting life. Our goal is to be with the Lord forever. Our goal is to see people healed, see testimonies, see victories. That's our goal. And we've got a miracle working God. Um, Wednesday night, went up and had prayer. I had, thought I had a bad tooth and prayed about it. It's all gone. And, and that's just a little thing. And I know there's a lot of big things out there, but the Lord wants to hear big things and small things. The Lord said, give us all victory. But we hang in there, united in the Lord, loving the Lord, serving the Lord, loving one another and all the people. Too.